You are listening to In the Know with David O. Informative, substantive, intelligent talk radio on 860 AM WWDB. And now your host, Philadelphia Councilman David O. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful Tuesday. Getting a little warm out there, don't you think? Uh, A little bit humid for me. But thanks for joining me. You are In the Know with David O. here on WWDB 860 AM. Uh, let me thank the show's sponsor, Weinerman Pain and Wellness. I appreciate their uh, uh, support of this show. We try to bring you information that is uh, substantive, uh, informative, uh, useful, uh, and, and may I say positive. We have just some wonderful folks with uh, great talent. Uh, you know, they're aspiring or they're successful, but something I think we can all um, get something from, and, and, and many of them uh, provide opportunities for you to interact with them, whether it's a performance or something they're they're doing to help the community, um, plenty of those great opportunities. Um, last week, uh, we uh, were talking with Eddie Alvarez, former UFC lightweight champion, about his warrior spirit. And, uh, you know, he is out there. Uh, he certainly um, is a fighter in the very best sense of the terms, a, a real Philadelphian. We're so proud of him. And uh, similarly, but in a completely different genre, Tommy Joyner, co-owner of uh, Milk Boy, The Venues, Milk Boy Studios, uh, BBCG Films. Um, and uh, the reason I tell you that is because you can listen to all our shows. We have such wonderful people. Um, first of all, you can go to my YouTube channel. Uh, just type in In the Know with David O to find previous podcasts and leave comments and, f- uh, and provide feedback. Also, I'm always interested in what you want to know. We have a segment, What the People Want to Know, or uh, if there's uh, things that you think uh, you'd like to hear about uh, on this show, we'll go investigate. So check out my uh, social media sites and reach out to me. Um, my Twitter is at David O. Philly. If you don't know what a Twitter is, don't worry about it. Uh, Facebook, David O, that's uh, D-A-V-I-D-O-H. Instagram, Caldo Cares, C-A-L-D-O Cares. I think that's Councilman at Large, David O, Caldo Cares. And otherwise, you can just email me with your comments uh, or your suggestions at davidoradioshow at gmail.com. And thanks for tuning in. Listen, this week we have uh, three wonderful guests um, first, we're going to talk to Jim Stevens. He is a musician, but he's not performing today. He, in fact, is going to tell you about performances in order to support victims of abuse and rape. And that is uh, Mermaid Rescue Week coming up. And then we're going to be treated to uh, to an interview and a performance uh, from Brendan Evans. He's a classical uh, guitar player right here in the Philadelphia area, and uh, he has won many, many uh, competitions, and uh, and he teaches at universities here, uh, but he'll be performing live, and uh, we'll also hear from the Consul General of Italy in Philadelphia, the Honorable Andrea Canapari, uh, the founder of so many uh, events, including Chow Philadelphia, which we look forward to every year. But right now, let me introduce you to Jim Stevens. Jim, how you doing? Good, good, Councilman. Good to be here. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just getting a signal, getting a little bit closer to the microphone. Are we good there? All right. Getting the thumbs up. So uh, you're actually in from New Orleans, right? Yes, that's correct. I know it's New Orleans, but I like to tell everybody that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, New Orleans and the folks in New Orleans just pronounce it wrong. But you're kind of like, by, kind of like, a, a kind of a co-located now here in Philadelphia and New Orleans. I've been maintaining my dual citizenship, I guess, for a decade. <laughs> so I'm just back a little bit more frequently toggling. <laughs> well, last few months. one of the reasons you're back is because you founded an event um, which uh, is is really raising funds for women against abuse and women organized against rape. And this is now going to be the third annual Mermaid Rescue Week. Yes. Uh, it's at venues across the city, different parts of town. And the first year was 2015. And... It was a, it was successful enough that we could keep going to a second year and third year uh, with the awareness and advocacy. So it's structured how 
different venues across the city each night, mm-hmm. and right. it gives it gives more accessibility because uh, concerts, visual artists, performances, um, it, it makes for a more comfortable environment, a more anonymous environment for someone who needs the resources uh, or the advocacy or the legal representation or a way out or to be able to just get a card. It's it's an anonymous, more of an anonymous thing of picking up the phone, cold calling, walking in somewhere, like that fear, you know? Mm-hmm. So you, you just go into a show, and each show speaks for itself. It's just a concert. Well, for our listeners, they would love to go to the show uh, just for the entertainment, the, the great music, all that. But on top of that, and more importantly for you, they're supporting a great cause. Definitely. And e- each night there will be a rep. Uh, this year, Women Organized Against Rape wasn't able to work into their scheduling to be a part, but Women Against Abuse will be there each one of the shows. Uh, representative handing out cards and literature. Okay, so at that point of contact, you right. can get. So in addition to the fact that people can go for a great show and support a great cause, there will actually be someone there providing information and who is available if help is needed. Definitely. Now you are a musician yourself, so let's get into this a little bit. I mean, basically, you got a couple of albums, right? Yes, uh, first album came out on Rope Dope Records in June, and. Two more are coming out over the next four or five months, an acoustic blues record, then another full band ensemble. And you play two instruments. Uh, would you, why don't you tell our listeners about the instruments that you, you play? I'm primarily a lab steel player, but I think more people may know me as a harmonica player. Okay. Um, and I'm a guitarist. So okay. Songwriting, production, arrangement. Now, now, what's the difference between being a regular guitarist and a lap steel player? A lap steel is an instrument that you, you literally lay on your lap when you play. Or like on a little uh, stand-up stool, almost like a keyboard stand. Right. You could, and the tone sticker, the action's higher off the. It's a tonality thing. Okay. You know, I, I don't think somebody wakes up and says, "I want to play lap steel. I want to play a trombone." You know, something right, about that right. tone that just brings mm-hmm. you in. Right. Uh, sucks you into doing and, and right. And, and is this played with a slide for the most part, or or yes. no? It could be played individual notes as well, or no, all you, slide. You, all slide. Okay. Cool. Cool. All slide. And then you play the the guitar, the guitar. regular guitar. Yes. And uh, and then you play the harmonica, right? Yes. Uh, and we were talking this a, a little bit because I said, gee, I wish you brought your harmonica because, you know, uh, I find the harmonica like a fascinating instrument because basically, I don't know, you breathe in, you breathe out. And how do you get the thing to make sounds that you like? It's it's difficult. I don't I, – I've tried teaching it a couple times. It's not – I can teach guitar in a second. Because I could see your fingers. I can, Right. Yeah. It, it's like a, frets and stuff. It, it, it's a lot more explaining or theory or, I guess, my technique, trying to teach it to explain uh, the ins and outs. And, you know, it's a, there's only 12 notes, you know, and mm. they're only, like, so big. So you have to be able to work and have those melodies. Yeah, and, and there's different harmonicas with different ranges. Is that right? Right. So um, there's 24 uh, major diatonic, and then there's a chromatic, so... All the major minors. There's yeah. There's, no, there's not just like one harmonica. Yeah. So you, do you have like a set of harmonicas? Is that how it works? At one point, I had over 30. Wow. And, and not just for having 30, but each harmonica was a different different key for a different mm. song, different. Okay. Stuff, yeah. And then the, the chromatic ones are the ones like Stevie Wonder plays. The mm. little toggle switch. They're like okay. their own instrument. Um, they're totally different than just playing a regular diatonic harmonic. I guess the difference would be like being a lap steel player and a guitarist. Mm. They're both stringed instruments, but they're right. totally different Totally different instruments. Now, now, are you performing any of these uh, evenings where you're having Mermaid Rescue Week? Uh, Friday at Tusk, it'll be uh, myself just doing a blues thing, and then uh, Kenyon Lanier and his funky brethren and uh, Boy Wonder and Cat Madama are all playing on Friday at Tusk at 4th and South. Okay, let's start with this. For our listeners, if they want to check out the uh, schedule of events, if they want to support... You know, victims of uh, sexual assault, rape, other things, if they want to possibly, you know, get more information or, or bring someone over who they want to kind of subtly introduce to a support mechanism, where can they go to learn more about Mermaid Rescue Week? Uh, we'll be at the fire on Monday the 19th. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a happy hour thing from 530 until 845. And then Tuesday we're at Bob and Barbara's on South Street from 6 to 8. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, a few of us are literally doing canvassing, going around to bars and places to drop off literature. 
And then Friday night, uh, it's us at Tusk at Fourth and South. Okay. Is there a website or somewhere people could go where they could get the exact location and times? Uh, you, you can go into a Jim Stevens Full Tilt Boogie Band or Jim Stevens Music on Facebook. And then okay. you, you can pull up everything on there. Okay. Fantastic. And uh, is there a cover charge? Uh, there's no cover charge on Tuesday and Thursday. Monday, we have a cover charge. Now we're trying to work out and find the sponsor to cover the production fees uh, for the fire. Okay. So if we can find the sponsor, a couple hundred dollars to, to do that, then we'll waive the fees for that. So it would be just like donations at the door, and then, you know, the bands will piss around, pass around a tip jar. Okay. Everyone's there for the uh, uh, for the uh, advocacy yeah. and donating their time. Give what you can, give what you want, yep. all for a good cause. Yep. Okay, excellent. Well, um, what are your plans now? You're you're in Philadelphia, you know, uh, for uh, Mermaid Rescue Week, but you're also doing a little recording. Yep, um, uh, Mermaid Rescue Week is the 19th to the 23rd, and then obviously I'm here on your show today. I have a couple other things lined up for media and whatnot leading into it, and then I have a, have a Delta Blues album coming out, just a duo acoustic blues album on Rope and Dope as well, uh, feature on Boy Wonder. It's a duo acoustic blues record, uh, real rootsy, real uh, – people don't really make records like it anymore, so I feel like it's something that uh, the label has confidence and belief to, you know, someone else may not put it out. Uh, so I'm lucky for that. I think it's something needed, you know, because uh, the Delta Blues and Roots music is the backbone of all American music anywhere. Like, that's where everything came from. So it's a harken back to those Sonny Tony and Brownie McGee records and – Reverend Gary Davis and Sunhouse, um, really old school, really, uh, it's a, it's like an essay on the condition of the human spirit, you know, mm. just people. It's it's not the prettiest, but right, that right. type of storytelling uh, through that medium is something that I feel has gotten lost and uh, should be uh, more accessible to folks. So we have that. And then uh, third album, Phyllis Hippiola Soul, I'm completing recording here. Between right. now and mid-July, and that should be out sometime by the end of the year. So all on Rope Dope Records. Right, and I'm looking over this information. So, again, for our listeners, if you want to come out and see Jim Stevens and support the cause and, and uh, have a great evening as well, June 19th, the venue is called The Fire. It's a $10 cover, 5.30 p.m. And then the next day, June the 20th, Bob and Barber's Lounge. 6 p.m. It's free at Will Donations Accepted. And then on June the 23rd, Tusk, T-U-S-K, 7.30 p.m., free at Will Donations Accepted. Um, do you know the exact address of these locations, or at least the uh, the general location? The fire I know is on Girard Avenue. Where Where is that on Girard Avenue? Uh, it's right at 4th Street. Right at 4th and Girard. Right how and how Girard. about Bar- Bob and Barber's Lounge? Where is that? 1509 South Street. 1509 South Street. And then on the 23rd, Tusk. Where is that located? Tusk is directly on the corner of 4th and South. It used to be the old Cheers to You. Downstairs, mm. Woolly Mammoth now. And then upstairs is a venue, Tusk, Woolly Mammoth, you know. That's the right. name of the upstairs venue. And and I see you've got, uh, and, and correct me where I mispronounce th- things, uh, kind of uh, helping you out on stage will be Steve Vivarov, Tim Strotter, Colonel Mike Tyler, Rob Tate, um, and special guests. I, I see that you got uh, Kenyon Lanier, My Funky Brethren, Boy Wonder, Cat Madamba. Yes, uh, they're all performing on Friday. That'll be a fun show. They'll all be fun. But, okay. Uh, uh, K- K- Kenyon and Boy Wonder, they've been a part each of the three years, donating their time and their bands um, to be part of this each of the three years running. So we're mm. all closing it out right. on Friday. They've been big supporters. Okay. Well, listen, for those who are interested in learning about uh, more about you and your music as well as all your, your charitable things that you do, uh, you were talking about your Facebook uh, site. Do you have any other places? Uh, Ropeadope.com. Ropeadope.com. It's yeah. easy enough, right? And on Facebook, what, just uh, Jim Stevens Full Tilt Boogie but, Band? That's right, yes. All right, perfect. Well, uh, Jim, thank you for your great work. Thank you for joining us. And listen, uh, to everyone out there, please stay tuned because right after this commercial break, we're going to be talking to Brendan Evans, who's a guitar player, but a different kind of guitar player, and he's going to perform live. You are listening to In the Know with David O. Informative, substantive, intelligent talk radio on 860 AM WWDB. 
My friends, this is Joe Krause. You've heard me on Philadelphia Radio now for over 20 years, and you know I don't often endorse products or people unless they are real game changers. I want to tell you about Weinerman Pain and Wellness, located in Center City, Philadelphia. And at the end of this short personal endorsement, I want you to consider Weinerman Pain and Wellness. If you are recovering from an injury, if you or a family member has been diagnosed with a disorder that has stopped you in your tracks, or if you're like me, determined to learn about wellness while getting yourself prepared to stay healthy so you can enjoy the blessings of your family. Remember the name of this warm and caring location, Weinerman Pain and Wellness. Why should you consider Weinerman Pain and Wellness? Because they are who you expect them to be. Weinerman Pain and Wellness on the web at WeinermanPainAndWellness.com. Weinerman Pain and Wellness located at 100 South Broad Street, just south of City Hall. Call Weinerman Pain and Wellness at 215-988-9503. That's 215-988-9503. Call today. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Philly Labor Rx Injured Workers Pharmacy Network, featuring PPC Pharmacy, First Choice Pharmacy, and Precision Scripts, providing injured workers with premium products and services from the point of injury through the entire healing process. The Philly Labor Rx Pharmacy Network cares about injured workers. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Right, and we are back. I hope you uh, uh, joined us for the first segment of the show, and uh, we may hear yet again from Jim Stevens. He's sitting here. Uh, He can't go back home. That would take an airplane, get back to New Orleans. Um, But, yes, uh, Mermaid Rescue Week is coming up June 19th through the 23rd. Uh, Just wonderful events, great music. Uh, Meet Jim himself, uh, you know, here and perform as uh, he is out there supporting victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, rape, and other things through these fundraisers for uh, women against abuse and women organized against rape. But now we're going to talk to uh, Brendan Evans, and he too is a musician, uh, but he is a different kind of musician. He is uh, classically trained. He is also trained with the the flamenco style of guitar, and he um, is just such a well uh, kind of a decorated musician with uh, first uh, uh, place prizes in such a... Uh, competitions as the Montreal International Guitar Competition, University of Louisville uh, Guitar Competition, Rosario Guitar Competition, uh, and so many others. Um, he is right here from the Philadelphia area. Uh, he actually not only performs and perfects his art, but he also teaches, uh, and and perhaps at Settlement Music School. Otherwise, you got to get into University of Penn because he teaches there too, but I don't know. The tuition alone is... I don't know. It's a pretty expensive. But welcome to the show, Brendan. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. Okay. And, uh, and, and uh, well, let, let me ask you this. Um, uh, you're sitting here with this beautiful guitar, and we were talking about it. Now, that guitar is like $10,000. Is that right? Uh, yes. It's, uh, I still... Uh, send payments to Canada every few oh, months. Oh my now goodness! And so, so that is uh, that is a, a beautiful guitar, and and, and uh, it is anyway your craft. It is the the instrument that you play. What makes that guitar special? Well, it comes from uh, the De Jong family of luthiers, based in uh, Ottawa, I believe. Mm. And uh, the 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 daughter of the family uh, specializes in classical guitars. And uh, I've run into her in a number of festivals and, and fallen deeply in love with a couple of her guitars. 
the first of which was sold out from under me. I told her to wait 12 hours while I made phone calls to try and borrow money to, to oh, get it. Spoken like a true musician. Some, yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me call somebody for that. Call some friends, <laughs> some family. So okay. I was trying, and, I, and the, oh, and the next goodness. morning the thing was, and I it really, I had oh, the feeling goodness. playing it. It was my guitar. Oh, I had this deeply personal connection. It's right. Feels right, sounds right. Is mm-hmm. that is that what you're talking about? Yep. And that was about six years ago. And a couple of years ago, I was at another festival, and there she is with her guitars, and it's this one. And I have a feeling that's close enough to that mm. that I I uh, I kind of just pull the trigger on. You that. know, I I by the way own a, a, a Fender electric guitar. It's not, okay. It's not ten thousand dollars, but here's what happened. See, when I was young, I started messing around with the guitar a little bit. And then over the years, of course, I didn't play, and now I'm really, really old, and I play even worse than I played before. But uh, I saw the guitar, and I just love the guitar, so I had some extra money, and I bought it. And I imagined with such a slick, nice guitar, I would be running up and down those frets. But, of course, it doesn't work that way, <laughs> not at all. So you can't really purchase a great guitar and sound great. So how many um, how many years have you been spending uh, learning and studying and, 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 and honing your skills on the guitar? Well, I, I started, um, I don't know what they were thinking, but my parents, well, I know what they were thinking. They, mm. they took a three-year-old Brendan and put him in a Suzuki violin class. Wow. And so I played violin until I was about eight, and then uh, something about the cool factor started to bother me with the violin, and so I wanted to become more like Elvis Presley. And mm. so I got a toy guitar, and that's where it started. And, oh, okay. Uh, it was sort of a hobby through, through high school. It's, it's basically what I did instead did it, of socializing. Did it work well? Did you did you make it with the ladies? All that type of thing. Uh, I spent a lot of time alone. And, oh yeah, my goodness! Yep. That, don't don't get the guitar. <laughs> and listen, that's not the story. No, okay. it's for the art. It's oh, okay. for the art. Again, uh, like a true musician. <laughs> yeah. So you were not goofing around. You had uh, picked up this instrument. You know, we really connected with it, and you were committed. Yeah, yeah, and it was a uh, one lesson I had in high school that changed my, it reoriented my my musical compass. Mm. I came in, and my teacher was playing this beautiful uh, tremolo piece. Uh, the tremolo is, a, is a, one of the beloved techniques on the classical guitar, and it it completely opened my eyes and ears to to a kind of guitar playing that I didn't know could be so beautiful. Wow. And so after that point, it sort of became more and more of a discipline, and then it became a career, and here we are. So has the guitar been a, uh, a jealous uh, mistress? Has it been a, a loving mistress? Uh, what, what has the guitar been for you? Uh, it's been both at times. This relationship with the new instrument is, is complicated. It's a, it's a complicated marriage. Um, uh, but the, the music itself um, is very demanding, uh, technically and interpretationally, and certainly to perform it all. And so there have been periods, years, where I've really been been struggling to feel like I'm it's worth my time, like I'm good enough to do this, and like the practicing doesn't always feel like it's paying off. And uh, but the more you go through the process of of learning material and then eventually performing it, the more comfortable you get with being uncomfortable and when you're in the middle of the process mm. so. and so for our listeners um you spent four years at phillips exeter academy and then four years at oberlin conservatory and then two years at the san francisco conservatory um and in addition to which you then spent a number of years uh, around the world, including um, uh, in Spain, in cities of uh, Grenada and um, Cordoba. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was in the, in the middle of my undergraduate mm, time. I, okay. I I just took off from uh, from Ohio and went to Spain for a year, uh, and that was a big a big thing for me. It took my my it elevated my technique and my my understanding of how deep music can really be on the guitar yeah and i understand you you kind of hit a crossroads because somebody told you hey you know give it all up don't go back to america commit yourself to flamenco style guitar playing yes yeah it was my the last teacher i had there um they kind of have a the flamencos i I don't want to say categorically but there is this sort of cultural not a disdain but a sort of a uh it's 
they don't regard classical guitar. I, I actually, I don't want to. I don't want to say that. They're truly committed. I, let's say that. They're committed. Just devoted. To, yes. And so um, purists, yes, maybe. He, he, and there are a number of Americans and people from other countries who who go to Spain and really never come back. And mm, I, I know people wow. here who. Uh, come back to the U.S., but it's once you go and once you get into the world via dance or or of playing guitar, you it's a part of your soul, and uh, and so I I still feel the pull mm. to this well, day. Well, let's not keep the listeners uh, you know on the edge of their seats, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen. Brendan Evans, he's going to perform live. Thank you. on his uh, classical guitar. No, I'm going to be playing a, a short prelude by the Venezuelan composer Antonio Lauro. Fantastic. Beautiful. Beautiful. Don't you, you agree? All right. Everybody's clapping. You can't hear them. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I hope uh, everyone out there listening, I hope you really, really enjoyed that. That is uh, years and years and years and years of commitment, devotion, training. It doesn't come easy. So thank you very much. Listen, for, for for the folks listening, if they want to learn more about you or if they want to uh, check out your music and all that, uh, do you have a social media contact site for them? Yeah, I have uh, I have a SoundCloud page, which mm-hmm. has a bunch of live recordings that have uh, accumulated over the years. Uh, I have my website, which is brendan-evans.com. And uh, then my personal Facebook page is a good way to get in touch. Okay, yeah. brendan Evans.com. With a dash in between. With a dash. Okay, important. <laughs> Brendan-Evans.com. Excellent. Now, um, uh, if folks want to get lessons, uh, they can, of course, uh, if you're going to Penn, you might try to figure this out. But uh, if you're not going to the University of Penn, then Settlement Music School is is a place that you teach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been there for a, for a number of years. Uh it's a it's a wonderful uh, institution. A lo- very one. Of, it's the oldest community music school in the country. Uh, it's over a hundred years going, and they've got branches all over the city. Um, and yeah, it's I'm not teaching during the summer for my after about a thousand lessons a year. I when the summer comes <laughs> around, I take yeah. off. Yes. Um, and and uh, before we get to you taking off, because I, I do want to get into that for a second, but. But uh, you are also available for private lessons. Yes, okay. yeah, I do. I, I teach uh, uh, s- timing, uh, per, you know, my schedule permitting. I teach, right. teach private lessons out of my, my space or in, in people's homes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And how do people get in touch with you? Via the website, email, Facebook, all my contact information okay, is out there. Okay, perfect. Now, yeah. you are heading to Italy. I am. And when are you leaving? Yeah, I, uh, I have... Um, 
I've got a concert in Cheltenham Township Summer Series in, in the Arboretum there on July the 9th, which is a Sunday. Okay, what time? At 5 o'clock. Okay, listen, folks, this might be your last chance to see uh, Brendan perform. Oh, well, I'll at be least for, You'll be back, but at least for a month or so, you'll be in Italy? That's right. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the day after, I, I, I fly to Milan and take a train to Florence. I'm going to spend some time with my sister and her brother-in-law, who's wow. a Florentine that she married. And then um, I was uh, honored and, and lucky enough to receive a scholarship to study at the Volterra Project, which is a, mm. a nine-day um, intensive guitar seminar. And, and there I'll, wow. I'll have the honor of, of studying uh, the music of J.S. Bach with, uh, with living legends of the guitar. Wow. Uh, all, all in Italy, huh? Yeah, all in Italy. And then, just as an aside, there was a, uh, um, a meditation retreat in the same area. Mm. Uh, so after that, I will be... Hanging up my guitar and taking my uh, my eyes and looking down and sitting quietly for eight to ten hours a day for ten days. Yeah, you know, um, uh, our next guest, who's sitting here right now, the uh, Consul General of Italy, is looking with great interest because, you know, he studied at the university – uh, at a university in Milan, and uh, and he founded a uh, uh, a kind of alumni group, I think, as well. And so, you know, um, it just is fortuitous that you're heading to Italy, and here we have the Consul General <laughs> of uh, Italy in Philadelphia. Um, well, listen, I mean, um, I really appreciate you being uh, on the show and your commitment to music, and uh, now you're traveling overseas, and uh, – Quite frankly, I'm glad you're going to be able to connect with, uh, you know, the, the, the consul general who's done so much to promote the connection between Philadelphia and, and Italy. Any words of advice for our listeners out there, be they musicians or not? Um, just to listen with um, an open heart and open ears and, and to uh, – really engage with music whether you want to play it or not and um it's it's not an easy road all the time learning an instrument and committing to it but um the the rewards are are many in, in so many different ways so i encourage you to pick up an instrument or to go to concerts more live music is the best way to connect uh with with y your yourself and your surroundings and and the musicians and so just support the local arts uh performing arts and if you're studying an instrument yourself, keep the faith because it's um, it's often it's often difficult to to feel like you're getting somewhere, but you will. All right, sound sound advice. Well, thank you so very much to our thank listeners. You. Listen, stay tuned because we'll be right back after this commercial break with Andrea Canapari, Consul General of Italy. You are listening to In the Know with David O. Informative, substantive, intelligent talk radio on 860 AM WWDB. My friends, this is Joe Krause. You've heard me on Philadelphia Radio now for over 20 years. And you know I don't often endorse products or people unless they are real game changers. I want to tell you about Weinerman Pain and Wellness, located in Center City, Philadelphia. And at the end of this short personal endorsement, I want you to consider Weinerman Pain and Wellness. If you are recovering from an injury, if you or a family member has been diagnosed with a disorder that has stopped you in your tracks, or if you're like me, determined to learn about wellness while getting yourself prepared to stay healthy so you can enjoy the blessings of your family. Remember the name of this warm and caring location, Weinerman Pain and Wellness. Why should you consider Weinerman Pain and Wellness? Because they are who you expect them to be. Weinerman Pain and Wellness on the web at WeinermanPainAndWellness.com. Weinerman Pain and Wellness located at 100 South Broad Street, just south of City Hall. Call Weinerman Pain and Wellness at 215-988-9503. That's 215-988-9503. Call today. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Philly Labor Rx Injured Workers Pharmacy Network, featuring PPC Pharmacy, First Choice Pharmacy, and Precision Scripts, providing injured workers with premium products and services from the point of injury through the entire healing process. The Philly Labor Rx Pharmacy Network cares about injured workers. At any given moment, somewhere in America, a baby is taking a first step. A developmental milestone. But for too many parents, a baby's first steps aren't just a milestone. They're a miracle. These are the parents of babies who were born prematurely or with birth defects. 
It's a crisis affecting more than half a million babies in the United States each year. You can help them by joining volunteers like you who walk in March for Babies. The money you raise funds research and local programs that help babies overcome the challenges of premature birth and birth defects. Together, our steps make stronger, healthier babies a reality for thousands of families. Sign up today at marchforbabies.org to take the steps that help make milestones and even miracles possible. Who will you march for? I'm working two jobs, and my husband works too. My kids go to school with your kids. We live right next door. You know my family and me pretty well, but here's one thing you don't know. I'm one out of every six Americans, and my family is struggling with hunger. Like you, we believe in this country. What's hard to believe is in the land of milk and honey, how many hardworking Americans have to choose between paying bills and feeding their families. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for those around you quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. To help fight hunger in the Delaware Valley and to find your local food bank, visit feedingamerica.org. That's feedingamerica.org. Introducing the YMCA. What, you already know the Y? Or so you think. Sure, you know the Y for a swim, a workout, even a game of hoops. But did you know we're more than that? We're a cause. When you take your jump shot at the Y, someone else is getting job training. Take a cardio class while kids are in an after-school enrichment program. Practice your downward-facing dog as a teen practices her leadership skills. That's the why. We work with people no matter their age, income, or background and give them the opportunity to learn, grow, and thrive, all with one simple goal in mind, to strengthen our community. And we've got so much more that does just that. So while you might think of the why as that place for lifting weights, We're also about lifting entire communities. Introducing the why. We're so much more than a place. We're a cause. Visit ymca.net slash more. Okay, and we are back. Um, you are listening to In the Know with David O. I'm Councilman David O. Thank you for joining me. Uh, because of the guests, the guests that I have on that, uh, bring us the information, the news, the insights. Uh, we, uh, were talking to Jim Stevens, who's the founder of Mermaid Rescue Week, and that's an effort on his part. He's a, he's a musician, he's recording, he's doing a bunch of things, but one of the things he, he likes to do is to help other people, and, uh, I know he's, he's done a few other things, but this week, uh, June 19th through the 23rd, is uh, Mermaid Rescue Week. It's all about helping victims of domestic abuse, sexual abuse, uh, those type of things, to, through two great organizations, Women Organize Against Rape and Women Against Abuse. So please check that out. Jim Stevens, uh, Full Tilt Boogie Band. You throw those words in Google, you'll find everything you need to know about, anything you want to know about Jim Stevens and Mermaid Rescue Week. And then we heard, and I hope you got the chance uh, to uh, to enjoy the music of Brendan Evans, and you can find him at Brendan uh, Evans dot com um, and learn about uh, well not only his music and who he is and and, he, and hear some of his music, but also see where he's performing. And uh, by the way, you can get lessons at Settlement Music School. You can contact him for private lessons if he's available, you know, because uh, he's busy. He's out and about. And then if you are attending the University of Penn, uh, well, part of your tuition may uh, allow you to get some lessons and uh, please take advantage. Well, listen, our, our guest now is just a wonderful gentleman. Um, he is the Consul General of Italy in Philadelphia, uh, Andrea Canapari. Good afternoon. Welcome. Buonasera. Oh, there we are. That's that's uh, that's the real deal right there. And a Philadelphia connection because you studied law at University of Penn. 
Yes, last century. As you know, I love Philadelphia since uh, last millennium, actually. It's a great city. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great city with a lot of uh, great Italian heritage, a great culture. So I think that really Italy and Philadelphia are perfect together. So since last millennium, I wanted to come back. And uh, instead joining some law firms in New York, I decided to serve my country and become a civil servant in the diplomatic service. And I'm very happy now to have enjoyed four years in the great city of Philadelphia. Well, in these four years, um, the Consul General has been credited by many in our business and cultural uh, uh, you know, communities here as well as our political for having really uh, kind of um, expanded and uplifted um, this connection uh, between Philadelphia and Italy. Um, and I, I guess it starts with the fact that you saw something that perhaps other people didn't see, and you really um, made a lot of things happen. David, I love Philadelphia. I think there are so many international opportunities in this city. I think international corporations could benefit tremendously uh, Philadelphia and other regions uh, such as Europe. But uh, a little bit, uh, Philadelphia is unfortunately underappreciated here and in the country and internationally. Mm. Sometimes they think that Philadelphia is cream cheese and rocky. Yes. And it's much more. There are so many cultural institutions, great people and great opportunities. But uh, people li like you, that I think we, we share the belief that Philadelphia can benefit more for international opportunities. Yes. We yes. have to work and let uh, uh, make an awareness about what we can do internationally, how can we work together, how can we create a new opportunities in every field. And, and you have done a lot. So first of all, uh, something people may have heard of, uh, Chow Philadelphia. That actually is relatively new. It's, it's only about a, a two or three years old. Is that right? I exactly. Uh, seems like it's been here forever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope I was not too much pushy about Chow Philadelphia. No, but it's a great, great, great thing, yeah. My idea was to highlight the success of Italian-Americans here, the Italian cultural contribution, and the dialogue between Philadelphia and Italy and Europe since the beginning. Since I'm the only European diplomat, in town, I felt uh, a duty to, to try to raise also the, the European flag in, in, in this town. And mm. Italy is present uh, here with a consul general since 1791. So we believe in Philadelphia. Yes. Even before the unification of Italy, we were here. And uh, so the idea of Ciao Philadelphia is to bring together all the great uh, cultural organizations of the region and uh, create event with an Italian theme during the, the month of October. So, for yes. instance, we, we enjoyed uh, uh, wonderful uh, um, classical guitar music a few, few minutes ago. Yes. And uh, we have the Philadelphia Classical Guitar Society as one of our partners. Uh, we have the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, Independence Hall National Park, all the great institutions and universities. And they do events with an Italian theme. So, for instance, the Italian... Uh, presence at Independence Hall, um, organized by the Rangers of Independence Hall. Yes. Um, Italian tour at Philadelphia Museum of Art. Mm. So everybody can enjoy a piece of Italy, and uh, we give everybody the chance to be Italian for one month in Philadelphia. Well, certainly the wine, the food, <laughs> all that stuff. You know, the only thing I don't like are the Italian suits, because they're, <laughs> they're cut for skinny guys, <laughs> and I can't wear them. Unfortunately, eating, <laughs> enjoying eating a lot, as, as I do, I'm not skinny <laughs> at all, but uh, I'm a professional sommelier. I love wines, uh, yes. and they are great. But we mm. have to remember that the number one item of our export in this region is machinery, right. actually high-tech machinery for the pharmaceutical companies. You so know, it's you important know, to combine. Yes, I, I was going to say that I did a tour of, um, of, a, uh, of, a, of a company that, that made – uh, pharmaceuticals for, I believe it was Merck, and they were very proud of the mixers, and they said, this is imported from Italy, and they were explaining how, like, each pill has to be so exact that they get custom-made mixers and the craftsmanship of Italy, so I was like, wow, that's really, this is years ago. No, that, that, that's a wonderful example. And we have another living example here. We have the Simeon Foundation. I don't know if you've been there. I've been there. The beautiful cars. It's Exactly. It's half a billion um, U.S. dollar um, collection of mm -hmm. Italian sports cars. And 
genius, an Italian, Italian-American doctor, um, Dr. Ed Penn and, and, and Jefferson created this collection. And the idea is to let people understand that if Italians were able to do these uh, wonderful cars, that's why they are able to do the, the machinery now. Yes. And, and that's important to know because we can cooperate. It's not... Uh, uh, I mean, it's ad- adding jobs, <laughs> if, yes, I can, yes. if I can say. It's uh, sure. working together in order to, to also go in new markets and uh, and make everybody in a better condition. Yeah, I, I have a colleague who likes to say none of us are as smart as all of us. And uh, and so what you're talking about is when we all do what we do best, put our heads together and come up with new innovative ideas, solutions for today's problems, we're going to have an edge on everybody else. And that's kind of what you've done in kind of uh, really bringing new life to this uh, to this uh, console office. And uh, so we talked about, you know, some of the obvious, right, the, 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 the food, the culture, but you're also doing it in the sciences. Yes, science is important. I mean, um, education and research uh, uh, here, it's, it's very something that distinguishes Philadelphia. And we have a lot of um, Italian researchers coming here. We have top uh, uh, Italian-American in key position in hospital research centers. So we can uh, um, use these people as kind of ambassador between the two countries and the two continents and create together initiatives. One of the leaders in this region I'm working with is Steve Clasco of Jefferson, and we are creating innovative partnership between Italian companies and Jefferson and create even a joint program between Jefferson and Italian entities. So that, that's important because it will raise even more the international profile of Philadelphia and create more opportunities for everybody. Mm, that, that's great. Now, um, <clears throat> what are you looking forward to uh, this year, 2017, uh, in terms of the things that you have set up between Philadelphia and Italy? Yeah, we, we for Ciao Philadelphia, we have uh, a lot of events. So we are going to announce the, the, the calendar of event in the next weeks. So I hope that everybody will take uh, a chance to enjoy these Italian events uh, in uh, in this region. Last year, we have we had 70 events open to the public in four American states. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be part of Ciao Philadelphia 2017, even. Uh, I did all the work because I will be in another uh, climate, in a warmer climate. But uh, you hope that everybody will enjoy that anyway. Well, what he's talking about is after four years of doing just a fantastic job in, here in Philadelphia, he has uh, been elevated. He is going to be the ambassador to several Caribbean nations. Yes, I, I will be based in the Dominican Republic in Santo Domingo, um, which has some similarities with Philadelphia. Uh, because uh, it was uh, Philadelphia is the city of first, but also Santo Domingo was the, actually mm. the first city of the Americas. Right, they have right. the first cathedral, the first university of the Americas. Mm. So there is at least some symbolic uh, connection. Well, we just look at it as an expanding our reach. You, you're here, now you're there in the Caribbean. We'll still contact you. And as I say, you're welcome to, to enjoy the winter weathers here in Philadelphia. <laughs> or vice versa. When the winter is brutal, <laughs> Come and visit me. And actually, it's an idea also, and, and we are having this discussion with several institutions to have some triangular activities. Yes. Italy, Philadelphia, and the Caribbean. So let's right. try to leverage the weather. Yes. Well, well, certainly that's tempting for me, and I'm sure folks are living here. Now, we have an ambassador sitting right across from me. I don't know if we're going to knight him or what we're going to do with him. But what advice would you have for Brendan Evan as he's off to Milan and other places? Oh, I think that he, he already uh, he already lined out a great program to enjoy Italy and, and the cultural uh, heritage. He will start with Florence, which is uh, the first sister city of Philadelphia, mm. uh, more than 52 years ago. Uh, then he will go. He will enjoy Tuscany. I think it's it's an interesting uh, program. Oh, fantastic! Now you also uh, have done things with sports. Because sports is also something that is a universal language people enjoy so much. Yes, actually, would like to. Uh, we are working with some top Italian soccer teams to let them understand this region and try to do something really important and innovative. There is an idea to create uh, a uh, soccer hub in the U.S. nearby yes. Philadelphia, and. Um, 
let's cross our fingers. There is some okay. work to do. We're working on that. We're working on that. Okay. Well, well, let me uh, just tell our listeners a, a little bit about you. Um, first of all, you are a very well-educated person. Um, and so uh, the Consul General uh, graduated with uh, uh, top marks uh, from uh, – Bocconi University in Milan, which I understand is like the Wharton of Italy. Yeah, if, not, if not all of <laughs> Europe, right? Can I say that on this show? But at least Italy, right? It's one of the greatest uh, Italian uh, business and economic school. Yes, yes, one of the greatest in Europe, actually. So you graduated with a degree in economics, and then in 1998, uh, you went to the University of Parma Law School, followed by getting a master's degree at the University of Pennsylvania Law School while on a merit scholarship awarded uh, each year to only one Italian lawyer for academic excellence. Yeah. I, I, I loved to, to study a lot at the time. Then I changed my mind. I wanted to serve my country <laughs> and to enjoy international opportunities, and that's what I think I'm good at. Okay, fantastic. Well, you seem to be very good at it. You recognize opportunities. You you put different people and entities together. Uh, when they combine, can do more than when they are by themselves. That, that's what I really am passionate, and uh, I do believe that uh, here everybody can benefit more. So we we have to to work together. I'm talking as I, I would stay in Philadelphia forever, but it's uh, something that. Uh, I do hope uh, you will keep it uh, and, and maintain because yes. opportunities are real. What, what what does the future hold for Italy? Italy, it's uh, I hope uh, Italy will have uh, a great future um, as uh, it had a wonderful past. Uh, it's a country of design, uh, great uh, way of living and, and values. The challenges are. Uh, a lot. Uh, we, we are living in tough times. Yes. And, uh, I think. Listen, it's, everybody. <laughs> tough everywhere. It's uh, it's important to to recognize. I think uh, the international opportunities are important also for us to to learn uh, about what others are doing and try to to solve uh, our problems. Mm. And and you know it's a, it's of interest to me as a Philadelphian because you know so much of our opportunities and the direction we're heading depends on our our friends and neighbors. If uh, if uh, countries that we're doing business with, if we're exchanging with, uh, if countries that send us tourists, and we if if, if we're uh, doing well, all of us, uh, then 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 the, the future is bright. But if any of us are not doing well, our future starts looking a little dimmer. Um, I, I, I really believe that myself, but, you know, it, we're living in interesting times because basically um, that is not universally uh, accepted as, a, as a, a fact. And and nor do I say people are wrong, but it's just interesting. We've seen uh, Brexit. We've seen a kind of the U.S. kind of pulling away from the uh, international um, kind of uh, commercial um, or, or entrepreneurial uh, uh, areas, and 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 so um, uh, you know, uh, I, I I I certainly hope, at least for Philadelphia in our region, that we stay engaged. We look for opportunities, um, and we take advantage of uh, openings where we can uh, in, engage more investment, uh, jobs, and and other things uh, for folks here in Philadelphia. And uh, Italy looks like a great place for us to do that kind of a partnership. I think Italy is the perfect partner for, for Philadelphia. We are founding members of the European Union. We believe in international corporations. And uh, if you walk on, on the street of Philadelphia, you see that uh, it's a wonderful uh, American city, but uh, with a strong European flavor. Um, and, and you see that uh, for so many uh, signs. First of all, you call the center of the city, you call center city. You don't call it downtown, mm. uh, as they do everywhere in, in this country. Yeah, I wondered why, and now I finally am going to get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because a center city is the translation of the Italian uh, definition of centro città. Mm. It's a place where you live, you shop, uh, and you work. In an American downtown, usually you work and then you, you go somewhere else. Ah. So it's a very European and Italian concept. And there is a sense of beauty in the city, that, which I think is coming from also from the European 
uh, immigration and influence since the beginning. So it's the perfect place to engage these uh, international activities. Can we get more movie stars from Italy? <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> yeah, I, I myself, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I really am very interested in the arts economy as, as a, just a great thing for us here in Philadelphia and I'm sure around the world. But uh, certainly Italy is well known for its arts economy. And, and uh, you know, I wish we had more of it here in our, in our city, in our region. I suspect it's up in New York and uh, out in some other cities. But how can we get more of that here in Philadelphia? I think, first of all, we have to let people understand what is this great city. Sometimes, uh, um, I don't know, doctors, they know Jefferson or UPenn, but uh, they don't know the, the art uh, dimension in the city, and, and vice versa. Musicians, they know the Philadelphia Orchestra or the opera, but they have no idea about uh, uh, the, the higher education. Uh, when I tell people that in, univer- in Philadelphia they have uh, 104 universities, they think it's not true, and they think that uh, mm. the, the capital of higher education in the U.S. is somewhere else. Right. So let's make uh, people understand uh, uh, what's going on here since uh, two centuries. That's also one, one of the uh, elements of interest of Chow Philadelphia. We are bringing together all the cultural institutions and so we let people also internationally to see uh, how many uh, dimensions there are in this city. And we bring the package together, and that's quite impressive. Yeah, and so as much as you have done to promote the interests of Italy, in doing so, you have actually promoted Philadelphia. And as much as you are a cheerleader for Italy, and I encourage everyone to go take a look at the Italy for tourism and, and shopping and all those other business opportunities. But, you know, uh, uh, Consul General Canapari has been a cheerleader for Philadelphia. And, and so I really appreciate that, and I thank you for that. And thank you for joining our show. And good luck to you in the Caribbean, and come back to Philadelphia often. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here, and I will wait you in Santo Domingo. Fantastic. Well, listen, everyone, that that is our show for today. Thank you for joining me, uh, uh, Consul General Andrea Canapari, uh, Consul General of Italy here in Philadelphia, Brendan Evans, classical guitarist, and Jim Stevens, founder of Mermaid Rescue Week. Tune in next Tuesday, In the Know with David O. You've been listening to In the Know with David O., on 860 AM WWDB. Tune in again next Tuesday at 2 p.m. for more informative, substantive, intelligent talk radio with Philadelphia Councilman David O.